Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start working towards creating our own custom lobby and menu for Mirror. For creating a lobby, I'm going to be doing two videos. So today's video will be creating the main menu UI, letting the player select their name, adding them to a lobby and allowing them to host and join a server by actually using Unity's UI rather than using the GUI thing we've been using in the past few videos. Then in the next video, we'll actually be creating the lobby UI so that we can see all the players in our lobby and we can ready up and start the game. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get started. So this video is split up into three parts. Part one will be writing the code so that the player can input their name and save it. The code also for the UI and for the network manager. Then for step two, we'll be actually setting up the UI itself in Unity, making sure we've got all the scripts on the right game objects, setting all the dependencies, making sure the buttons call the right methods. And then finally for step three, we'll be testing it and then I'll be talking about next video where we actually finish it off. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so for the first script, it's gonna be the player name input. So this is a mono behavior sitting on the UI where we enter our name. Okay, we have two things we pass in. We pass in an input field to actually, you know, set the name and then the button to say, yep, that's my name, I want to continue, okay? Then we have a static string getter private setter, which is just a way to say, you can grab this from somewhere else, but you can't set it. You can only set it internally, which is what private means. And this is just so that we can grab the display name in the next video when we actually go and use it in the UI, in the lobby, we want to be able to grab this. So it's a lot easier to just say, player name input dot display name without needing a reference because it's static or we could actually load it from player prefs. That's a way I've considered doing it, it's up to you. Then over here, we actually have a constant string for the key because we're gonna be saving and loading it from player prefs. So yeah, you could just type player name wherever you need it, but I feel like having a constant string is a lot easier. So on start, we set up the input field. So what does that entail? Well, we say if we don't have uh, this player press thing, so if there's no name saved in the player press, then return, but if there is, go get it. Okay, so it goes and grabs that player press thing and it sets it to be the input field. So basically, if you've already played the game before and used the name, it just loads that one up and then it sets it. And to set the player name, all it does is it actually doesn't really set anything. It just turns on and off the continue button based on whether the name is valid. So in my case, if the string is null or empty, then it's not valid. So if it's not null or empty, then set it to be interactable. Okay, and this is just the way to allow them only to continue once their name is valid. And then over here, we actually save the player name, which is triggered by the button. So we'll set that up in Unity. And we set the display name over here, the static string, to be the input fields text, so whatever they've typed. And then we actually save it to player prefs, so that, as I said, when they next open up the game, the name is already saved. Now they can change if they want to, but also they can just press continue. It makes their life a lot easier if they've already played before. So in the next video, we're going to want some custom data for the player, like for example, storing their name on the network. We need to store that in a network behavior somewhere. So I've made one called network room player lobby. And the reason I've called it network room player lobby, uh, the lobby is because it's this uh, tutorial thing is about lobbying. So I would actually call this maybe whatever your game's called or an abbreviation of your game name. But then um, the room player is because we're also going to have a game player. So we have two different ways to represent the player based on whether they're actually in the game yet or whether they're just in the lobby. So this is what we're going to have. And yeah, we're going to leave it empty for now. We're just going to make the script ready and be able to actually refer to it, though we have no data actually in here. So the next thing to make is our own version of the network manager. So I mentioned in our previous videos that we can inherit the network manager and override stuff to do our own custom logic. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to inherit network manager, as I said, and I've called it network manager lobby because that's the name of this tutorial. But obviously you can call it the name of your game. Then we have a reference to a scene. Now this scene tag is a very handy way they've made so that you can actually drag in a scene in the inspector and it references it by string. So normally if you're referring to a scene in Unity, you have to actually do it by name. You have to type in the name and you might type it wrong or you might change the scene name. The way they've done it here is actually really handy. You just drag in the scene reference and the name's always right. So scene tag, serialized field, private string, menu scene, okay? And then over here, we have reference to um, the prefab for the network room player. Now, obviously that's the empty thing, but we want reference to a prefab of that. And then we have two actions here, two events, on client connected and on client disconnected. And I've made these public static events so that I can actually listen into them on my menu UI without having to directly call them from here. Uh, just using events makes it more decoupled. And then one thing about networked games is you actually need, this is the same in Photon and in Mirror, you need to register prefabs that you're going to be spawning on the network. 
and you can actually drag those in in Unity to the network manager. There's a list for it. But when your game might have lots and lots and lots and you be adding and removing them all the time, it's it's a lot of hassle to do that. So instead, um, what Photon does, so I've made my own version of it here, is based on whether you're a client or a server, it works slightly differently. But we have to essentially load from our resources folder all game objects. So load all game objects from resources, but under the directory spawnable prefabs. So in my game, I'm going to make a resources folder and inside there, I'm going to make a spawnable prefabs folder. And that's where we're going to chuck everything that we're going to be spawning in over the network. If we're on the server, it just sets it to this list. And if we're on a client, we register it to our client scene. It's just a different way of doing it. Okay. Um, you see all that here. As I said in every video, if you need access to the code, it's all on my GitHub page down below. Go find it. Okay, so on client connected is called on the client when you connect to a server. I'm saying do the base logic and raise my event. Then for when a client disconnects, do the base logic, raise my other event. Okay, so that I know elsewhere that I connect and disconnect. It allows me to do things like um, when I try and connect to a server and I fail to connect, that calls on client disconnect. So maybe the IP is wrong or something. Then I can listen in for that and do something accordingly. Then over here, this is called on a server when a client connects. Okay, so when a client connects to me, I say, well, have we got too many players? If we've got too many players, then disconnect that person, right? Don't let them connect if they if we've already got too many people. And then over here, if we're not in the menu scene, also disconnect them. So currently it stops players joining our game if the game's already in progress. So if you want to change how that works and you change the code here, but for now this just stops people joining in progress, okay? And then finally, on server add player. So called on the server when a client adds a new player with client scene dot add player. And that is called over here in the on client connect. It's called right here, okay, to add player. And what it does is when that is called, we say if we're in the menu scene, then spawn in the um, room player prefab, basically the, the thing with this on. <coughs> and then we add the player for connection. So we already have reference to that person's connection and we're basically tying together the connection and this game object. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to the network identity component on this game object and assign it to us. So the server knows that that game object represents us. Okay, so there's only two more scripts to go. The main menu has reference to the network manager and the landing page panel. It's just a bit of UI that we can turn on and off. And what we say is when we want to host a lobby, so when we press the host button, we will tell a network manager to start a host or start as a host. And then we'll uh, disable the landing page panel. And then what will happen is when we actually make the lobby UI next time, that will turn on. So it's effectively, you know, turning this off, turning that on, and then we'll be in the lobby. And finally, the join lobby menu. This one is separate. This is for when we actually try and connect with an IP. Okay. So we need reference to the network manager, the landing page panel again. We also want reference to the input field where they type the IP address and then the join button to actually, you know, click join. Yes, this is the correct IP I want to connect to. Now what we do is when this game object is enabled and disabled, we subscribe and unsubscribe from these events so that we are aware in here when a client connects, when a client disconnects. And by a client, I mean our client. We only know about ourselves. This is on the client, not on the server. And when we press a button, when we press the join lobby button, this function gets called. We say, okay, we set the network address for the network manager to be at this IP address, which can be a local host if you're trying to connect to your own network. And then we say start as a client. So when we call start client, it actually uses this network address as the network address to um, connect to. And then we actually disable the join button so they don't spam it and you know call start client multiple times. And there's probably a built-in thing for handling that if you try and start multiple times, but I'd rather just stop the player trying to do it, okay? And then we turn that button off. Then when a client connects, so when we, when we have successfully connected to the server based on this IP, then we re-enable the join button in case they go back to the menu later, we expect it to be re-enabled. And then we disable this object and we also disable the landing page, which leaves us in the same state as when we disabled the landing page of the main menu. The reason we disable this object as well is because it's actually a pop-up to get you to enter your IP address. It's a separate panel. We also need to disable that too. And then finally, if we disconnect, we turn on the join button. And this gets called actually when we fail to connect. So if we type in an IP, it tries connecting and it can't find the lobby with that IP, then it just disconnects us. And because it disconnects us, we are re-enabled the button to effectively be able to try again. Okay, so now we're gonna be making the two game objects we need. Now for the actual UI, it'll take too long for me to make on the video. So if you want access to it, you can go get it down below on my GitHub page. 
Equally, you can just watch me quickly run through it and, you know, make your own version of the UI. It doesn't have to look the exact same. But the first prefab we want is the room player, which is just make an empty game object and stick on uh, network identity component and the room player lobby we made. And I don't know why this uh, is still here, so let's get rid of that. That's all we want though, just, just the uh, room player lobby with the network identity. That's our room player, make it a prefab, drag it down into your project. Uh, the network manager, you're used to just having the network manager, but you should remove that and add on the network manager lobby, which is the one we we wrote. And I think all this is fine, so leave that on, server tick rate. Um, I've set the online scene to be this scene, so when, if you disconnect and then reconnect, you're still here. Uh, but it don't, I don't think that even makes a difference because I haven't got an offline scene. So don't, don't really worry about that. And then uh, max connections four. Okay, this is fine. Set the prefab we want is the room player. Which so finally for the main menu UI, as I said, it'll be quite hard to follow along. So if you need any help, then obviously go down to the GitHub down below, or you can try and go along, make it yourself, you know, do what you need to do. But effectively what we have is we have the root object with the main menu script on. Don't worry about setting any uh, references yet, because if you haven't made the rest, then it won't make sense. So just add the main menu script to the root, then add a canvas to that. I've set the scaling to be 1920 by 1080. Then I've got a title, some text. Then I've got the panel for the name input. So in this, I've stuck the name input panel script. I've got an input field. And that input field on value changed calls player name input dot set name. Okay, and that's that script is on the panel here. Then I also have a button. Okay, so the button, um, when you press it, will say call save player name. And it will also deactivate the name input panel and activate the landing page panel. So when you confirm your name, it closes this and it opens up the, the main menu or the landing page, sorry. Okay, and that's all you need right there. Then on this uh, here, you can actually drag in those two things. You can drag in the input field, drag in the continue button, and this is set up. Then if we move on to the landing page panel, let's actually just enable it and disable this so we can see. So for the landing page, we've got the button to host a lobby, which calls main menu .host lobby. Uh, I've actually got this third button, which is deactivated, so you don't really need to worry about that. And then we have the join lobby button, which is setting active this other game object. So let's actually go over to that right now. So if we now enable this, this game object is where you enter your IP. So it's got a panel on it for this. Okay, this is the panel. Then on there, oh sorry, on the root, we actually have the script join lobby menu, which we wrote earlier. Um, you need to make sure you've got reference to the network manager, drag that in. And then the landing page panel, you can drag that in too. And then these two things we need to add to it, the input field and the join button, okay? So you guys can you know, set up some text there. An input field has no callbacks, don't worry about that. And then the button does have the callback. The button has the callback to call join lobby menu dot join lobby, which is over here. And then once you've added those input fields and buttons, then you can drag those in here. And then this is all set up. So we've set up the background, disable it. We've set up the landing page, disable it. Um, actually, well, sorry. One more thing is on the landing page. Yeah, the join button, make sure when you press join, it actually enables this uh, enter IP address panel. Okay, and then that's done. And then the final thing is to make sure the actual root object has all its things set up, which is just the network manager dragged in and the landing page. And then once this is done, go and build the game and see what happens. Okay, so over here, I've called myself YouTube. I'm gonna host a lobby, okay? Now, if I go to uh, Dapper, confirm, join lobby. Actually, what I'll do is I'll stop this and currently no one is on localhost. So if I try joining, it tries. And then it fails, right? Now the buttons are reactivated again. But if I go here and a host, I'm now hosting on my local connection. I then join and it works. It takes me to the lobby. We're now both here. You can actually see both our room players are here. Okay. Now there's nothing obviously in the lobby, but the point is we've both been connected to a lobby. And all we need to do in the next video is actually create it, create some UI, some buttons to press and actually then move into a scene to play the game. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. Before asking any questions though, if it's some problem with setting up the UI, go ahead and look on GitHub. It's all there made for you, okay? Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, first, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yuris Letter, Hades Orko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or creating accounts on any of those, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.